Hello, and welcome back to the Gospel Teachings of Richard Arlen Kern. Uh, today we're going to be talking about what are the causes of man's suffering on earth and its event, suffer. Conclusions, the following cause man to suffer on this earth. God's chastisement or punishment of man for sin. Satan caused infirmities and possession of man. God's allowing Satan to inflict man with physical and mental distress to test their loyalty to God, and man's free will, evil acts. Point one, God's righteous chastisements cause man to suffer. A, God's chastisements in general cause man to suffer. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 38 through 44. Mem, shall not both evil and good proceed out of the mouth of the highest? Why have a living man murmured, man suffering for his sins? None. Let us search our ways and seek and return to the Lord. None. Let us lift up our hearts with our hands to the Lord in the heavens. Mun. We have done wickedly and provoked you to wrath. Therefore you are inexorable or inflexible. Semek. You have covered in your wrath and have struck us. You have killed and have not spared. Semek. You have set a cloud before you, that our prayer may not pass uh, pass through. 2 Maccabees chapter 6, verse 12 through 16. Now I beseech those that shall read this book, that they be not shocked at these calamities, but that they consider the things that happened, not as being for the destruction, but for the correction of our nation. For it is a token of great goodness when sinners are not suffered or allowed to go on in their ways for a long time, but are presently punished. For not as with other nations, whom the Lord patiently expects that when the day of judgment shall come, he may punish them in the fullness of their sins. Does he also deal with us so as to suffer our sins, to come to their height, and then take vengeance on us? And therefore he never withdraws his mercy from us. But though he chastises his people with adversity, he forsakes them not. John chapter 5, verse 5, 8, and 14. Now a certain man was there who had been thirty-eight years under his infirmity. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your pallet, and walk. Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, Behold, you are cured. Sin no more, lest something worse befall you. Romans chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. But if our wickedness shows forth the justice of God, what shall we say? Is God unjust to inflict punishment? I speak after a purely human manner, by no means. Otherwise, how is God to judge the world? Jude chapter 1, verse 7. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities which like them committed sins of immorality and practiced unnatural vice, have been made an example undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. Point B. God's miracles, chastisements, he inflicted on the Egyptians leading up to the Exodus caused them to suffer. Note, God called these Egyptian chastisements evils. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26, saying, If you will hear the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right before him, and obey his commandments, and keep all his precepts, None of the evils that I laid upon Egypt will I bring upon you, for I am the Lord, your healer. Exodus chapter 7 verse 20, miracle and or chastisement number 1. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord had commanded. And lifting up the rod, he struck the water of the river before Pharaoh and his servants, and it was turned into blood. Exodus 8 6, miracle chastisement number 2. And Aaron stretched forth his hand upon the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. Exodus 8.17, the third chastisement. And they did so, and Aaron stretched forth his hand, holding the rod, and he struck the dust of the earth, and there came synths, or lice, on men and on beasts. All the dust of the earth was turned into synths through all the land of Egypt. Exodus 8, verse 21 and 24, chastisement number 4. But if you will not let them go, behold, I will send in upon you and upon your servants and upon your houses all kind of flies. And the houses of the Egyptians shall be filled with flies and divers things, and the whole land wherein they shall be. And the Lord did so. 
And there came a very grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh and of his servants, and into all the land of Egypt, and the land was corrupted by this kind of flies. Exodus 9, verse 3 and 6, chastisement number 5. Behold, my hand shall be upon your fields, and a very grievous murrain upon your horses, and asses, and camels, and oxen, and sheep. The Lord therefore did this thing the next day, and all the beasts of the Egyptians died. But the beasts of the children of Israel there died not one. Exodus chapter 9 verse 10, chastisement number 6. And they took ashes out of the chimney, and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses sprinkled it in the air. And there came boils with swelling blains, an inflammatory swelling or sore, in men and beasts. Exodus 9.23, chastisement number 7. And Moses stretched forth his rod towards heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail and lightning, running along the ground, and the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. Exodus 10.4 and 13. Miracle or chastisement number, chastisement number 8. But if you resist and will not let them go, behold, I will bring in tomorrow the locust into your coasts. And Moses stretched forth his rod upon the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought a burning wind all that day and night, and when it was morning, the burning wind raised the locusts. Exodus 10.22, chastisement number 9. And Moses stretched forth his hand towards heaven, and there came horrible darkness in the land of Egypt for three days. Exodus 11.5, chastisement number 10. And every firstborn in the land of the Egyptians shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the handmaid that is at the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts. Point C. God's chastisement inflicted upon the Egyptian army during the Exodus caused them to suffer. Exodus 14, verse 27, 30, and 31. And when Moses had stretched forth his hand towards the sea, it returned at the first break of the day to the former place. And as the Egyptians were fleeing away, the waters came upon them, and the Lord shut them up in the middle of the waves. And the Lord delivered Israel on that day out of the hands of the Egyptians. And they saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore, and the mighty hand that the Lord had caused against them, and the Lord had used against them. And the people feared the Lord, and they believed the Lord, and Moses his servant. Note, Exodus 15.3, the Lord is a man of war, almighty in his name. Point D, God's chastisements inflicted upon his people, the children of Israel, during the Exodus caused them to suffer. Exodus 16, verse 16, 19, and 20. This is the word that the Lord has commanded. Let everyone gather of it, Manu, and much as it enough to eat. And Moses said to them, Let no man leave thereof till the morning, and they hearkened not to kill him, but some, some of them left until the morning, and it began to be full of worms, and petrified, and Moses was angry with them. And those of you who don't know what that is, the man who was um, what God sent, he sent dew on the land that created almost like a bread or like a cracker, and um, basically what happened was they let this go to waste, and Moses was not happy about it. Um, Exodus chapter 32, verses 7 and 8, 10 and 11, and 14. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, They have made to themselves a molten calf, and have adored it, and sacrificing victims to it have said, These are your gods, O Israel, that have brought you out of the land of Egypt. Let me alone, that my wrath may be kindled against them, and that I may destroy them, and I will make of you a great nation. But Moses besought the Lord his God, and the Lord was appeased from doing the evil which he had spoken against his people. Exodus chapter 32, verses 27 through 29. And he said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword upon his thigh, and let every man kill his brother and friend and neighbor for worshipping the golden calves. And the sons of Levi did according to the words of Moses, and there were slain that day about three and twenty thousand men. And Moses said, You have consecrated your hands this day to the Lord. Every man and his son and in his brother, that's a blessing, may be given to you. Exodus chapter 33 verse 3 that you may enter into the land that flows with milk and honey. For I will not go up with you, because you are a stiff-necked people, lest I destroy you in the way. Numbers chapter 11, verses 1-4 through 4 and 6. 
In the meantime, there arose a murmuring of the people against the Lord, as it were, repining at their fatigue. And when the Lord heard it, he was angry. And the fire of the Lord, being kindled against them, devoured them that were at the uttermost part of the camp. And when the people cried to Moses, Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire was swallowed up. And he called the name of that place the burning, for that the fire of the Lord had been kindled against them, for a mixed multitude of people that came up with them, burned with desire, sitting and weeping, the children of Israel also being joined with them, and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? Our soul is dry. Our eyes behold nothing else but manna. And basically this is the Jews not being thankful to God for, or even, I guess, trusting him and saying that he's going to provide them what they need on this journey to the promised land. Numbers chapter 12, verses 1 through 2, 5 and 6, 8 through 10, and 13 and 14. And Mary and Aaron spoke against Moses because of his wife, the Ethiopian. And they said, Has the Lord spoken by Moses only? Has he not also spoken to us in like manner? And when the Lord heard this, the Lord came down in a pillar of the cloud and stood in the entry of the tabernacle, calling to Aaron and Mary. And when they were come, he said to them, Why then were you not afraid to speak ill of my servant Moses? And being angry with them, he sent, he sent them away. The cloud also that was over the tabernacle departed. And behold, Mary appeared white as snow with a leprosy. And Moses cried to the Lord, saying, O God, I beseech you, heal her. And the Lord answered him, If her father had spitten upon her face, ought she not to have been ashamed for seven days at least? Let her be separated seven days without the camp, and afterwards she shall be called again. Numbers chap uh, chapter 14, verses 2 and 3, 11 through 16, and 28 through 32. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron, saying, Would God that we had died in Egypt, and would God we may die in this vast wilderness, and that the Lord may not bring us into this land, lest fall by the sword, and our wives and children be led away captives? Is it not better to return into Egypt? And the Lord said to Moses, How long, with this, how long will this people detract me? How long will they not believe me for all the signs that I have wrought before them. I will strike them therefore with pestilence and will consume them. But you, I will make a ruler over a great nation and a mightier than this is. And Moses said to the Lord, the inhabitants of this land, may hear that you have killed so great a multitude as it were one man and may say, he could not bring the people into the land for which he had sworn. Therefore did he kill them in the wilderness. Say therefore to them, As I live, says the Lord, according as you have spoken in my hearing, so will I do to you. In the wilderness shall your carcasses lie. All you that were numbered for twenty years old and upward, and have murmured against me, shall not enter into the land, over which I lifted up my hand to make you dwell therein, except Caleb, the son of Siphon, and Joshua, the son of Nun. But your children, of whom you said, that they should be a prey to the enemies, will I bring in, that they may see the land which you have despised. Your carcasses shall lie in their wilderness. Numbers chapter 21, verse 4 through 6. And they marched from Mount Hor, by the way that leads to the Red Sea, to compass the land of Edom. And the people began to be weary of their journey and labor. And speaking against God and Moses, they said, did you bring us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no bread, nor have we any waters. Our soul now loathes with very light food. Wherefore the Lord sent among the people fiery serpents, which bit them and killed many of them. Numbers 25, verses 3-5, through 9-11, through 11, and 16-18. through 18. And Israel was initiated to Belphegor. Upon which the Lord, being angry, said to Moses, Take all the princes of the people and hang them up on gibbets against the sun, that my fury may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said to the judges of Israel, Let every man kill his neighbors that have been initiated to Belphegor. And there were slain four and twenty thousand men. And the Lord said to Moses, Phineas, has turned away my wrath, that I myself might not destroy the children of Israel in my zeal. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Let the Madianites find you their enemies, and slay you them. 
because they also have acted like enemies against you and have guiltfully deceived you by the idol Fogor and Cosby, their sister, a daughter of a prince of Madian, who was slain in the day of the plague for the sacrilege of Fogor. E. God created the following to take vengeance and inflict evil on the ungodly, thus causing them to suffer. Ecclesiasticus chapter 39, verses 30 through 37 and verse 39. Good things were created for the good from the beginning, so for the wicked, good, and evil things. The principal things necessary for the life of men are water, fire, and iron, salt, milk, and bread of flour, and honey, and the cluster of the grape, and oil, and clothing. All these things shall be for good to the holy, so to the sinners and the ungodly they shall be turned into evil. There are spirits that are created for vengeance, and in their fury they lay on grievous torments. In the time of destruction they shall pour out their force, and they shall appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire, hail, famine, and death, or sudden death, all these were created for vengeance. The teeth of beasts, and the sting of scorpions, and serpents, and the sword taking vengeance upon the ungodly unto destruction. In his commandments they shall feast, and they shall be ready upon the earth when need is. And when their time is come, they shall not transgress his word. All the works of the Lord are good, and he will furnish every work in due time. Luke chapter 13, verses five, uh, 1 through 5. Now there came at that very time some who brought him word about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered and said to them, Do you think that the Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans, because they had suffered such things? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all perish in the same manner. Or those eighteen upon whom the tower of Silo fell and killed them, do you think that they were more guilty than all the other dwellers in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all perish in the same manner. Note, in these two examples, God used two different means to inflict his revenge of sudden death, one by the hands of man and one by a supposed accident. F. God provides a whole list of evils he will inflict upon those who do not obey his commands. These are found at Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy chapter 28. Number 2. Satan causes man to suffer. A. Satan causes infirmities and possession cause man to suffer. 1 Kings chapter 16 verses 14 and 23. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So whensoever the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul, David took his harp and played with his hand, and Saul was refreshed and was better, and for the evil spirit departed from him. Matthew chapter 8 verses 28, 31, and 33. There met him two men who were possessed, coming from the tomb so exceedingly fierce that no one could pass by that way. And the devils kept entreating them, saying, If you cast us out, send us into the herd of swine. But the swine herds fled, and going away into the town, they reported everything, and what had befallen the men possessed by demons. Mark chapter 1 verse 23 uh, through 27. Now in their synagogue there was a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold your peace, and go out of the man. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him, and crying out with a loud voice, went out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they inquired among themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and that they obey him. Mark chapter 7, verse 32 and 35. And they brought to him one deaf and dumb, and retreated him to lay his hand upon him. And his ears were at once opened, and the bond of his tongue was loosed, and he began to speak correctly. Mark chapter 9, verses 16, 17, 24, and 27 and 28. Master, I have brought you my son, who has a dumb spirit, and wherever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth, and he is wasting away. And I told your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. And when Jesus saw that a crowd was rapidly gathering, 
He rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, go out of him and enter him no more. And when he had come in the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast that out? And he said to them, This kind can be cast out in no way except by prayer and fasting. Luke, Luke chapter 7, verse 21. In that very hour he cured many of diseases, afflictions, and evil spirits, and to many who were blind he granted sight. Luke 4, 1-3 and 5-7 Now Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit about the desert for forty days, being tempted the while by the devil. And he ate nothing those days, and when he was completed, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of Man, command that this stone become a loaf of bread. And the devil led him up, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And he said to him, To you will I give all this power and their glory, for to me they have been delivered, and to whomever I will I give them. Therefore, if you will worship before me, the whole world shall be, right, be thine. Note, Satan is God of this world. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3-4 through four. And if our gospel also is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded their unbelieving minds, that they should not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1-3 through three. You also, when you were dead by reason of your offenses and sins, wherein once you walked according to the fashion of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air about us, the prince of the spirit which now works on the unbelievers, indeed in the company of these, even we, all of us, once led our, our lives in the desires of our flesh, doing the promptings of our flesh and of our thoughts, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest." Luke thirteen eleven thirteen and 16. And behold, there was a woman who was 18 years old and had a sickness caused by a spirit, and she was bent over and utterly unable to look upwards. And Jesus laid his hands upon her, and instantly she was made straight and glorified God. And this woman, daughter of Abraham as she is, whom Satan has bound low for 18 years, Ought not she to be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? And that goes back to being able to do good deeds on the Sabbath. Luke chapter 22, verses 3 and 4. But Satan entered into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, one of the twelve. And he went away and discussed with the chief priests and the captains how he might betray him to them. Acts chapter 19, verses 11 through 16. And God worked more than the usual miracles by the hand of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and, ap and aprons were carried from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out. But certain of the inerrant Jews, exorcists, also attempted to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits in them, saying, I adjure you by, by the Jesus whom Paul preaches, and a certain Sceva a Jewish high priest had seven sons who were doing this. But the evil spirit answered and said to them, Jesus I acknowledge, and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was spraying at them and empowered them both with such violence that they fled from that house, tatered and bruised. B. Satan's, uh, Satan's authority from God to test God's servants results in their suffering. Job chapter 1 verse 8 uh, and verse 12, chapter 2 verse 3 through 7. God allows Satan to test Job. And the Lord said to him, or Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a simple and upright man, and fearing God, and avoiding evil? Then the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your hand, only put not forth your hand upon his person. But you have removed me against him, or Job, that I should afflict him without cause. And Satan answered and said, Skin for skin, and all that a man has he will give for his life. 
but for forth your, put forth your hand and touch his bone and his flesh, and then you shall see that he will bless or curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in your hand, but yet save his life. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with a very grievous ulcer, from the sore of the foot even to the top of the head. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, do not be startled at the trial by fire that is taking place among you to prove you, as if something strange were happening to you. And that goes back to um, Job here, and that that was Satan saying, you know, let me test him then. Let, let me see if he really is what you think he is. And God lets that happen to test the saints to see if he uh, or they are really on his side. Uh, point three. The free will acts of evil men cause men to suffer. Following are some examples. Genesis 4, 8. Cain murders his brother Abel out of anger. And Cain said to Abel his brother, Let us go forth abroad. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and slew him. Genesis thirty one nineteen, Rachel steals her father's idols. At that time, Laban was gone to shear his sheep, and Rachel stole away her father's idols. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 6 through 12, Saul attempts to murder David out of envy. Now when David returned after he slew the Philistine, the woman came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet him, uh, to meet King Saul with timbrels of joy and cornets. And the woman sung as they played, and they said, Saul slew his thousands, and David his ten thousands. And Saul was exceedingly angry, And his word was displeasing in his eyes. And he said, They have given David ten thousands, and to me have given but a thousand. But can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul did not look on David with a good eye from that day forward. And the day after the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of his house, and David played with his hand, as at other times, and Saul held a spear in his hand and threw it thinking to nail David to the wall. And David stepped aside out of the presence twice, and Saul feared David because the Lord was with him and was departed from himself. 2 Kings chapter 11, verse 2 through 5 and 14 and 15. David's adultery and murder of Arias. In the meantime, it happened that David arose from his bed after noon and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And he saw from the roof of his house a woman washing herself over against him, and the woman was very beautiful. And the king sent and inquired who the woman was, and it was told him that she was Bethsabi, the daughter of Elam, the wife of Urias the Hethite. And David sent messengers and took her, and she came into him, and he slept with her. And presently she was purified from her uncleanliness, and she returned to her house having conceived." And she sent and told David and said, I have conceived. And when the morning was come, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Urias, writing in the letter, Set Urias in the front of the battle, where the fight is strongest, and leave you him, that he may be wounded and die. So David uh, slept with his man's wife while he is out in the war, and he's saying, uh, well, now that she's pregnant, have him work on the front line and basically give him every chance to die so he doesn't have to deal with it. Um, 2 Kings 13, uh, verse 11 and 12 and 14. Amnon commits forced fornication with Thamar. And when Thamar had presented him the meat, he took hold of her and said, Come lie with me, my sister. She answered him, Do not so, my brother. Do not force me. But he would not hearken to her prayers, but being stronger and overpowered her and lay with her. John chapter 15, verse 20. Remember the word that I, Jesus, have spoken to you. No servant is greater than his master. If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they have kept my word, they will keep yours also. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. And all who want to live impiously in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. And I think that's what we have to remember is that if we want to follow Christ, we are going to be persecuted, um, not only by, you know, the people you assume to be persecuted by, but also your friends, your family, your church members, um, and anyone else that's close to you that you would 
possibly think they wouldn't do that. But when you start seeking the truth and wanting to relay that truth, some people don't want to hear it, um, mostly because of the things that they've learned in their past. But if they were to search their Bible, uh, scriptural, biblical um, word, like not only the gospel, but also Old Testament writings, they'd see that God made special days. He made a promise to Abraham that he was going to make his seed abundant um, through Jacob, through Israel. So Israel isn't forsaken. It is God's people. It always will be. And um, we have to remember that God isn't going to promise something like that and forget about it. And yes, since um, quote unquote Christians believe in Jesus, um, that doesn't mean that the like people that are Jewish can't come to Jew or, or can't come to believing in Jesus as the true Messiah. Um, that's something that I do hope comes in time. But we have to remember that we are going to suffer. We are going to um, have a lot of things uh, come against us when we're trying to find the truth and portray the truth. And just remember that that isn't something that you should be upset about. In fact, um, in Psalms, David says that we should rejoice that. So rejoice when somebody or something comes against you and you know that you are still doing what is right and you're still giving that truth um, to them to the best of your ability. And that is all you can do to people who sometimes don't want to hear. So I urge you to all consider that if you are suffering in this world, it could be for multiple reasons listed out here, but consider that God loves you. That is why he is chastising you. He's trying to teach you and he's trying to um, grow you as a person on your own journey. And I hope that you all see that. God bless and hope you have a wonderful night.